Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about what's happening in the Russian economy, and specifically to talk about the levels of growth that Russia is currently experiencing, because I'm constantly being hit by messages down below, if you'll excuse the expression, from people saying, Russia's doing fantastically well. It's growing much faster than the USA. It's one of the strongest economies in the world. Your videos are absolute hogwash. So I want to go through the details of exactly what's happening in Russia. We'll have a look at the latest figures. We'll then go through a breakdown of how that compares to what's going on in the USA. And we'll have a look over the past five years. And that is really important to take that long-term perspective. We'll also have a look at what's going on on a currency adjusted basis because the ruble has fallen in value significantly over the past few years. And even though the economy is growing in terms of the purchasing power that that generates for Russia, there is a big impact in terms of the fall in the value of the ruble. So let's start off by having a look at the latest results that have been announced by Russia. On the 28th of August, the Russian authorities announced that industrial output had grown by 3.3% in July, compared with a 2.7% increase in the previous month, and by 4.8% since the start of 2024, and that compares with 3.1% for the same period in 2023. And the latest estimate for gross domestic product for the first half of 2024 now stands at 4.6%, compared with 1.8% for the first six months of 2023. So I think we'd all have to admit that at face value, those figures do look very good. And Russia's Deputy Economy Minister, Polina Kryotskova, said, given such high results in the first half of the year, we expect even higher figures for the entire year of 2024 than we had initially projected in the economic forecast published in April. So you may be sitting there thinking, well, maybe all of those keyboard warriors are right. Maybe Russia is doing better than the USA and is one of the best economies in the world. But I'll just stop you there because the Russian central bank has admitted that the economy is now overheating. As part of its announcement, the central bank said persistent labor shortages and wage growth, as well as high inflation, were the main signs of an overheated economy and promised to maintain tight monetary policy and fight inflation until it cools. The latest statistics show that real wages rose by 6.2% year-on-year in June, following an 8.8% increase in the previous month, while average nominal wages rose by 15.3% year-on-year. Wage growth in Russia is being spurred by the payouts handed to contract soldiers fighting in Ukraine, which have become a new benchmark in the economy, as workers in fast-growing sectors facing acute labour shortages demand similar pay from employers. In the first half of the year, real wages grew by 9.4%, while nominal wages increased by 18.1%, compared with the same period for 2023. And according to the new data, unemployment remained at a historically low level of 1.9 million people in July, or 2.4% of the workforce. So the Russian central bank has admitted that there are problems in the Russian economy right now. But let's break down exactly what's going on and then we can evaluate exactly what the problem is for ourselves. So let's start off by looking at what's going on with GDP, which is the most successful of all of the measures. This is the one that catches all of the headlines that you see in mainstream media that says the Russian economy is doing fantastically well. This chart shows the year-on-year -year movement in gross domestic product in Russia over the past 12 months. And what you can see from this chart is that in every single month, GDP has been increasing. And one thing to note about the scale on the right hand side here is that it doesn't start at zero. It actually starts at around 2.5%. In July 2023, the year on year movement in GDP was positive 5.1% and it remained above 5% in the next four months. It did come down slightly to 4.5% in November and 4.4% in December. It remained at a similar level in January 24, and then in February there was a huge spike in GDP when it increased year on year by 7.7%, a remarkable increase. However, in March it fell back down to 4.2%, hit 4.4% in April, 4.5% in May, dropped down to 3% on a year-on-year -year basis in June. And the latest figures for July 2024 show that GDP has increased over the past 12 months 
by 3.4%. And that latest figure of 3.4% compares to the full year forecast recently published by the IMF, where they upgraded the Russian economy to 3.2% growth for the whole of 2024. So Russia is certainly on track to hit that 3.2%, and at face value, it does look like GDP is doing extremely well. But the thing with gross domestic product is that you can't just look at it on a one-year basis. You need to look at what's been happening over the past few years. This chart shows the annual movement in gross domestic product for Russia dating back to 2018. And what you can see here is a real mixed bag of performance. The full year figure in 2018 was 2.8% growth. In 2019, when we saw a slowdown in the global economy, the growth fell to 2.2%. In 2020, which was the year when the COVID-19 pandemic struck all across the world, gross domestic product in Russia actually decreased by 2.7%. There was then a bounce back in 2021 when GDP increased by 5.9%. In 2022, which was the year that was severely impacted by the sanctions that were applied against Russia by the West following its invasion of Ukraine, which started in February 22, GDP fell by 1.2%. And in 2023, which was the year when Russia started to convert its economy into a wartime economy, it saw growth of 3.6% in GDP. Now, in order to put those figures into perspective, I thought it was worth comparing them to what's been going on in the USA over the same five-year period. This chart shows the annual movement in GDP in the USA dating back to 2018. And as you can see here, the key difference is that in five out of the last six years, the USA has achieved a positive figure in terms of its GDP growth. In 2018, GDP increased by 3%. In 2019, it was a 2.5% increase. There was a reduction of 2.2% in 2020 as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. It then increased by 5.8% in 2021 as everybody came out of lockdown and there was a huge boom in the economy. The growth in 2022 was 1.9%. And in 2023, the USA achieved growth of 2.5%. So as you can see, the growth profile for the USA is very different to Russia. And if we just look at 2023 in isolation, Russia grew by 3.6% compared with 2.5% for the USA. So at face value, you would think that the Russian economy is doing better than the USA. And that's certainly what a lot of people in the comments below are constantly saying to me. However, you need to look at what the long-term impact is of all those movements up and down. This table which I've put together compares the growth in GDP over the six years that we've just looked at for Russia and the USA. And what I've done here to make it a comparison is put an index figure of 100 at the start of the period. So when we're talking about indexes, quite often you'll have a benchmark year. So in this example, it would be 2017. And if we call that year a 100 index, then you can see whether or not the economy has grown or shrunk compared with 2017. So on the left-hand side of this table, we've got the six years from 2018 to 2023. We've then got the actual movement in GDP that we just looked at from the previous charts for Russia and the USA. And then the index is adjusted by that growth. So in 2018, we started with an index of 100. Russia achieved 2.8% growth. So at the end of 2018, the index increased to 102.8. It went up by 2.8%. In 2019, there was further growth of 2.2%, which meant that the index increased again to 105.1. So compared with 2017, the figure at the end of 2019 was 5.1% higher. Now, obviously, that is over two years, so it's not 5.1% growth. If you are averaging it, it would be something in the region of 2.55% growth. Now, in 2020, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, GDP actually decreased by 3.5%. And you can see that the index then reduces to 101.4. So compared with the situation for 2017, over the three-year period, there was only 1.4% growth in three years. In 2021, there was a bounce back of 5.9%, which meant that the index went up to 107.4. Now, in 2022, and this is really 
the critical year. This is when things start to take a turn for the worse for Russia in terms of the comparison with the rest of the world. Because of the sanctions that were applied against Russia, its GDP fell by 1.2%. So the index at the end of 2022 reduced to 106.1%. In 2023, as we've just discussed, GDP increased by 3.6%, taking the index back up to 109.9. If we now have a look at the situation for the USA, you can see that 3% growth in 2018 meant that the index went up to 103. A further 2.5% growth pushed it up to 105.6 at the end of 2019. During the COVID period, GDP shrunk by 2.2%, taking the index back down to 103.3%. There was an increase of 5.8% in 2021, pushing the index to 109.2. Further growth of 1.9%, taking the index to 111.3 in 2022. And in 2023, GDP increased by 2.5%, taking the total index to 114.1 at the end of that year. So if we compare what's happened in the USA to Russia, you can see that in the period between 2017 and 2023, the economy increased by 14.1 percentage points. If we look at what happened in Russia, the increase was only 9.9 percentage points. So Russia is lagging behind the growth in the USA by around 4.2 percent. So this really puts into perspective when you're looking at just annual figures. You can't do that because if an economy goes backwards like Russia did in 2022, the fact that it achieved 3.6% growth in 2023, you have to offset some of those losses against some of that growth. So in net terms, you could say that the actual growth in 2023 was only 2.4% if you knock off the 1.2% fall in 2022. However, the situation is actually much worse than that because Russia should have achieved growth in 2022 of around 2%. So the actual swing in that year was negative 3.2%. And Russia is now playing catch-up against the rest of the world in terms of its economy going backwards while everybody else went forwards. So hopefully the breakdown of that data starts to give you a better understanding as to why Russia is lagging behind the rest of the world and why percentage year-on-year -year increases in its GDP don't actually equate to Russia doing better than the rest of the world. They're coming from a lower base, so it's always easy to increase your percentage growth if you're coming from a lower figure than it is if you're coming from a higher level. And that's exactly where Russia is right now. They've lost ground against lots of other economies in 2022. They're now coming back strongly in 2023 in the first half of 2024. However, the other thing that we need to take into account is what's been happening with the ruble because Russia needs to import lots of goods. It also wants to get paid in rubles. It's not being paid in rubles by many countries, but it wants to. And as the value of the ruble deteriorates, it means that Russia has less purchasing power. And so the value of its GDP will actually be less. This chart shows the movement in the exchange rate between the US dollar and the Russian ruble over the past 10 years. And the reason I wanted to show this is really to show that the current level that it's trading at of around 91 to 1 US dollar is one of the worst levels that Russia has seen at any point in the past 10 years. In fact, there have only been a couple of occasions and they've both been since Russia's invasion of Ukraine where the exchange rate has actually been worse than that. The first period was initially following the invasion when the value fell to somewhere in the region of 125 to 130 to 1 US dollar. And the second period was in the summer of 2023 when it breached that 100 level. Now, President Putin wasn't very happy about that and he instructed the Russian central bank to do something about it. They introduced a whole lot of restrictions in terms of what companies and individuals can do with rubles in Russia. And as a result, the value did improve back down to around 90 to 1 US dollar. But when you look at the long term position here, you can see that the ruble today is worth significantly less than it has been at most points in the past 10 years. And just before anybody starts typing saying, why are you comparing it to the dollar? Russia doesn't care about the dollar. It doesn't do any business in dollars. But in order to put that argument to bed, this chart shows the exchange rate between the Chinese yuan and the Russian ruble. And obviously the Chinese yuan is very important to Russia and actually is becoming more and more important because 
all of the exports that it's sending to China are now being paid for in Yuan. And in addition to that, India is also paying for some of its exports in Yuan. So Russia is building up a large quantity of Chinese Yuan. And you can see that the exchange rate for the Yuan against the ruble follows an extremely similar pattern to what we just saw for the US dollar. The current rate of around 13 rubles to one Chinese Yuan is the worst that we've seen over the past 10 years, excluding the periods that we just talked about. And the reason why this is important is that as the value of the ruble deteriorates, it reduces Russia's international purchasing power. So let's have a look at the same data that we just looked at for Russian GDP and adjust it in terms of what's been going on with the ruble. This table, which is similar to what we've just looked at, shows the movement in Russian GDP between 2017 and 2023. So as you can see, the total value of GDP over those six years increased by 9.9 .9 percentage points. However, what I've added to this table is the average exchange rate that the ruble was trading for against the US dollar in each of those years. So you can see that in 2018, one US dollar was trading for 60 Russian rubles. That exchange rate reduced to 65 in 2019. So what that means is that if you were importing something that was valued at one US dollar in the international markets, in 2018, that would have cost 60 Russian rubles. In 2019, it would have cost 65 which represents a fall in value of the ruble of 8.3%. So in order to show the impact of that on Russian GDP, I've reduced the index figure at the end of 2019 of 105.1% by 8.3%. And you can see that the adjusted GDP index figure is actually 97. So a reduction of three percentage points against the figure for 2017. And what this really tells us is although GDP was increasing, the purchasing power in the international markets of the rubles being generated were actually going down as a result of the fact that the exchange rate was deteriorating. Now in 2020, Russia actually suffered a double whammy because there was a reduction in GDP as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. So the index fell to 101.4. But in addition to that, the ruble also fell in value by a further 7.7% to an average level of 70 to one US dollar. And when you adjust the index figure by that 7.7%, the net index at the end of 2020 was actually 94.1. So that represents a fall of almost six percentage points against the figure for 2017 as a result of a combination of GDP falling and the value of the ruble falling. Now in 2021, GDP did bounce back and you can see the index increased to 107.4. However, the ruble continued to fall in value by a further 7.1% to 75 to one US dollar. And when you adjust the 107.4 figure for that 7.1%, it takes the index down to 100.2, which means that in the four years to the end of 2021, the index only increased by 0.2%. Now, the figures for 2022 are quite interesting because there was a further fall in GDP as a result of the sanctions, which took the index down to 106.1. However, because of the level of support that the Russian central bank was providing for the ruble, the exchange rate actually improved by 13.3% to an average of 65 rubles to one US dollar. And as a result of the combination of those two factors, the adjusted index at the end of 2022 was 122.4, so 22.4% higher than the figure for 2017. Now, as you'll know, if you follow the channel, that improvement in the value of the ruble was very short-lived. It was very expensive for the Russian central bank to keep supporting the ruble, and the value has come down significantly over the past 12 months or so. And in 2023, the value of the ruble fell further to 85 to one US dollar, representing a fall of almost 31%. And when you adjust the increased GDP index figure of 109.9 following the 3.6% growth, it actually takes the adjusted index down to 84. So in real terms, Russia has far less purchasing power today in the international markets than it did back in 2017, despite the fact that GDP has been growing because the value of the ruble has fallen so significantly over the past six years, Russia is now in a worse position. So once again, what this analysis tells us is that you can't just look at GDP and assume that a country is doing really well, because 
it's producing its gross domestic product in its home currency. That's what Russia does. It works in rubles. But if the value of those rubles is constantly falling in the international markets, as has been happening over the past six years, then even if you're growing your GDP, it will mean that you can buy less things in the international markets. Imports will go up proportionately because you just don't have as much purchasing power as the value of your currency deteriorates. And this really puts into perspective the growth figures that we're looking at from Russia. You can't just compare percentages against percentages for other countries. You need to look into the other aspects as well. One of the key signs that an economy is overheating is that it will have rising inflation at the same time as rising interest rates. It tells you that things are starting to get out of control. And that's exactly what's happening in Russia right now. This chart shows the movement in the official rate of inflation in Russia over the past 12 months. And as you can see, inflation has increased in virtually every single one of those months. This time last year, inflation was sitting at 4.3%, which was almost exactly where the Russian Central Bank wanted it to be. Its target rate is 4%. However, today it's now sitting at 9.1%, which is more than double the target rate. And as I mentioned at the start of today's video, one of the things that's driving up inflation is the increase in wages. And that's partially being fueled by what's happening in Ukraine because Russia is having to offer higher and higher salaries to soldiers to encourage them to go and fight in Ukraine. And those higher salaries are filtering through for the whole of the economy because as people are being taken out of their workplace or leaving, they need to be replaced and wages are going up in a spiral. Now, when you look at this chart, you may be thinking, well, things don't look too bad. It doesn't look like the previous chart where it's gone up in every single month. However, two things to note about this chart. Firstly, it's real wage growth. So basically, this is the increase in wages over and above inflation. So you need to add on the level of inflation to these figures. And secondly, the scale on the right hand side of this chart doesn't start at zero. It actually starts at 5% and goes up to 14%. So what this graph shows us is that this time last year in July 23, Real wages had gone up by 9.2%. So you need to add on the 4.3% inflation on top of that to get to 13.5% increase in real wages. I know it doesn't exactly work like that. So don't bother sending me a message saying that's not how real wages are calculated. You can't just add one onto the other. But broadly speaking, it is how it's calculated. So that's what I'm doing just for the purposes of this illustration. If we now look at the most recent figures that have been published for June 2024, the real wage increase was 6.2%. So you might be thinking, well, that looks like it's a better situation than 9.2% in the previous July. However, when you take into account the fact that inflation was 8.6% in June 24, compared with 4.3% in July 23, the total increase in wages is actually 14.8% in June 24. Now that is a serious problem from Russia's point of view because when you've got wages increasing by double digits, it becomes a very difficult cycle to break because people have more money, they can spend more, therefore demand goes up and that pushes up prices. So it's very difficult to break this. And one of the major problems that Russia has right now is that it doesn't have enough people. This chart shows the movement in the unemployment rate in Russia over the past 12 months. And as you can see, over that period, there has been a significant reduction. In July 2023, the unemployment rate was sitting at 3%, which is actually a very low rate. Now, you may be thinking, well, isn't low unemployment actually a positive thing? Because it means that many people are then in employment. But the problem that Russia has is that it simply doesn't have enough people. And so a very low rate of unemployment means that basically everybody that's looking for a job has found one. But that doesn't mean that all of the unfilled vacancies have been taken. And if we look at what's happened over the past 12 months, the unemployment rate has reduced from 3% to the most recently published level for July 2024 of 2.4%. And if we compare those figures to what's happened in the USA over the past 12 months, in July 23, the unemployment level was 3.5%. And over the past 12 months, despite the fact that the US economy has grown, the rate of unemployment has increased. And the most recent figures for July 24 show that the unemployment level is 4.3%. And if we expand the scale of this chart to show it's been happening over the past 10 years, you can see that 4% 
is roughly the average that the USA has been running at. And if we compare that to what's been happening in the past 10 years in Russia, you can see that the unemployment rate 10 years ago was 4.8%, but it's been on a severe downward trend to the current level of 2.4%. And the reason for this is that Russia has a low birth rate, a high death rate, and it's also now got a high emigration rate. People have been leaving Russia over the past two and a half years as a result of the invasion of Ukraine. And the combination of all of these factors is applying more pressure to the Russian economy and once again tells us that it's overheating. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think reports in mainstream media can be very misleading. And I'm often seeing headlines telling me that Russia is growing at a fantastic rate. It's one of the strongest economies in the world. And those little snippets are picked up by people and they simply believe that Russia is doing very well and is completely unaffected by the sanctions. But as I've said on many occasions, you always need to look into the detail. GDP in isolation doesn't tell you whether an economy is doing well or not. You need to look at all of the other factors. And what we've been through in today's video are the details of how that GDP has been put together. And we've looked at the position over the last six years. And what we've seen is that in two out of the last six years, Russia has experienced a fall in GDP. In 2020, along with the rest of the world, so that was expected. But in 2022, it was driven predominantly by the sanctions that have been applied against Russia. And because Russia has been put backwards on two separate occasions over the last six years, growth rates of 3 or 4% for the current period need to be taken into perspective because when you're going backwards and then you suddenly go forwards again, you need to look at what the long-term growth position is. And the comparison that we looked at between Russia and the USA shows that over the past six years, the USA has grown significantly greater than Russia. So the fact that Russia is now reporting higher percentage figures for 2023 and the first half of 2024 doesn't really tell us the full story. And the other things that we've looked at in today's video also tell us that the Russian economy is now overheating. And this is something that the Russian central bank and Russian senior figures have acknowledged. They have actually come out and said that in the press. This isn't me speculating that Russia's overheating. They're telling us that it's actually happening. And when you look at what's going on currently with inflation, which has risen in every single one of the past 12 months and has gone up from around 4.5% to more than 9%, that tells us that there's problems in Russia right now. When you look at interest rates, they've gone up from around 7.5% to the current level of 18%, which is one of the highest levels of all the countries in the G20. I recently posted a video where I showed a comparison of all the countries, and the only countries that have high rates of interest in the G20 are Argentina and Turkey, and both of those economies are in a state of complete crisis right now. And in addition to that, we're also seeing Russia struggling in terms of the number of people in their workforce. So it's a combination of the low birth rate that's been experienced since the breakup of the Soviet Union at the start of the 1990s. There was a dip in birth rates. Russia also has a relatively high death rate as a result partly of poor lifestyle choices and also because of the wars that it's been involved in over the past 30 years or so. And also there has been a lot of people who decided they didn't want to hang around and work in Russia anymore as soon as they invaded Ukraine and around 1.2 million people fled the country permanently. So a combination of all of those factors tell us that although GDP is growing at one of the fastest rates out of all the developed economies in the world, the Russian economy is not doing well. In fact, it's under severe pressure. And the reason for that is because Russia has converted itself into what's called a wartime economy. And I've talked about this many times before. But basically, a lot of companies have now been commandeered by the state to help with the war effort in Ukraine. So they're being paid directly by the Kremlin to produce things. That's boosting all of their revenue and their profits. So this is what's forcing up GDP and making everything look very rosy. However, the people who are being taken out of other jobs to go and work in those companies are leaving behind vacancies. 
Those companies with the vacancies are now having to offer higher salaries to attract people in. That's pushing up the wages for everybody in Russia. Everyone's now being paid more, therefore they've got more cash. So they're spending more, demand is going up, and therefore prices are going up. And that's what's causing the increase in inflation. Now, interest rates have gone up rapidly to try to counter that. But unfortunately, that hasn't worked because... People in Russia don't care that interest rates are going up. They just want to keep spending. And so it's becoming a very difficult situation to solve, particularly because of the shortfall in the workforce, because those vacancies are not being filled. We're not getting to a point of equilibrium where the jobs market can then balance out and settle down. We've got this crazy spiral where there's a shortage of workers, so people are offering higher salaries, and so it goes on. And all of this tells us that the Russian economy is really starting to suffer. And the longer that this goes on, the more pressure that will be applied. Inflation is likely to continue rising, so are interest rates. That's going to put more pressure onto companies and individuals that have borrowed money because the cost of that borrowing will go up. All of this is really bad news for Russia and its economy. And if it doesn't sort the situation out at some point in the next three to six months, there are going to be severe problems by the end of 2024. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. You found it useful, informative and thought provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.